Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with some post June 1st free agent targets. We're filming this on Tuesday during our live show every Tuesday, 3 o'clock Mountain, 4 o'clock Central. But hey, it's post June 1, which means a handful of teams have some extra money to spend because teams sometimes like Denver, designate players as a post-June 1st cut, and that allows them to spread the dead cap hit for that player over 2023 and 2024. And Sean Payton, after cutting Brandon McManus, said this, The transactions continue here from now until training camp, and there may be a player or two we're still looking to sign. So we factored a lot of that in, and then we made that decision. Now, Denver's post-June 1st cap space is going to be around $13 million. Now, remember, just because they were to sign a player, just say, to a one-year $13 million contract, doesn't mean they're now at zero in cap space, right? Teams can put a lot of money into signing bonus to lower that cap hit. They can even use void years to spread the contract out. So just because they only have $13 million to spend doesn't mean they are locked at, you know, maxing out at $13 million. The cap hit can't be over $13 million. So let's jump into some of our free agent targets after June 1. Yannick Ngakwe starts it off. Let's also toss in Frank Clark. And then there's another edge rusher still on the market, Leonard Floyd. Now, hopefully by the time you're watching this, none of these three guys have been signed or else you can kind of skip over those parts. But those are three premier edge rushers that, frankly, I'm surprised are still on the market. And Denver's front five, I think, is good. I'm going to leave it at that. It's good. You can be great by adding one of those three players, I believe. Because Randy Gregory and Baron Browning, I don't believe, can be accounted on to be 17-game players and double-digit sack guys with Gregory's track record. And Browning, just last year, making the transition from inside linebacker to outside linebacker. So where does Unique Ngakwe or Frank Clark or Leonard Floyd fit in? Here are their stats from last season. You can see all three players had eight sacks or more. That was more than any player on Denver's current roster last season, right? Randy Gregory only played a handful of games. Zach Allen got five and a half sacks. Baron Browning didn't touch eight sacks. So, excuse me, nine and a half, five sacks, um, and nine sacks for Leonard Floyd. Those tackles for loss. But two of those three guys, my bad, got nine sacks or more. I got uh, confused my tackles for loss. But nevertheless, they still could benefit by adding another edge rusher. Now, if I had to pick one of those three guys, I'm leaning Leonard Floyd. He's coming off his third straight nine-plus sack season with the Rams. He also has experience in a 3-4 defensive front. He played under Vic Fangio in Chicago, who brought that defense over to Denver, and it has more or less stuck around through Evero and now Vance Joseph. So Leonard Floyd would not be entering a dramatic schematical change. Now, he also has been very available, which... I can't say the same for Randy Gregory or Baron Browning so far or Zach Allen in his career. Floyd has not missed a game in five straight seasons. So there's a big factor that goes into banking on Randy Gregory and Baron Browning. It's not just can they be double-digit sack guys. Can they play a full season? I feel a lot more confident in Leonard Floyd doing that than the rest of this Broncos roster. So be the GM for me. Should the Broncos sign Leonard Floyd? I'm typing Y for yes. Want to know what you're thinking, though? Do you disagree with me? Are you on my team here? Sound off in the comment section. Do you think Denver should go out and sign Floyd? Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Now, when it comes to some of the other guys out there, but Leonard Floyd, to zero in on, look at what he's done over the last four seasons. Like I said, coming over from Chicago after 2019, blossomed in the City of Angels. Ten and a half sacks, nine and a half sacks, nine sacks. He has been a very productive player. And when you stack him up against the rest of the Broncos pass rushing unit, here's how he fares. Like nine sacks last year. Randy Gregory and Baron Browning combined for seven. Zach Allen definitely showed a lot of promise and an improvement from year one to two to three and so on. But still, his ceiling so far has been five and a half sacks. So Denver is hoping he can take a big step forward. But we still have a little bit of reason to believe Got to see it to believe it, right? Leonard Floyd, I've seen him, and I believe that he can be a valuable addition to this team. Now, you can also add BetUS to your sports book rotation. If you're looking to put some money down on the NBA postseason, the NBA Finals, or the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, make all of your picks 
over at chatsports.com slash bet. Our promo code Broncos125 will get you guys a 125% deposit bonus. So in English, if you put $100 in, BetUS sees that 100 matches it with another 100 and then they tack on an additional 25 So now you have $225 to play with, whether it's on the Nuggets or any other team out there. Just make sure you use our link, chatsports.com slash bet, and promo code Broncos125 when signing up. Denver has been busy this offseason, right? The Walton Penner wallets are very deep. The pockets are bottomless. And they have already spent a lot of money. So I wouldn't be shocked if George and Sean Payton decide we've already had our fun in free agency. We spent more than any other team did in, to- in terms of total money spent, total value, right? 87 and a half on Mike McGlinchey. That's the most after Derek Carr, if I remember correctly. Ben Powers fetched more than $50 million. Zach Allen, 47. Singleton casually gets $18 million. Even the backup quarterback gets $10 million. So I can see why Denver might feel like they're somewhat tapped out. But then again, Sean Payton did just say we might be looking to sign another guy. Let's move on to our next pair of free agent targets. Other side of the football, running back, Ezekiel Elliott and Kareem Hunt. Now, Zeke is a post-June 1 cut by Dallas, so he can sign once he's actually like officially, officially through the waiver wire, uh, through the transaction wire released after June 1. Kareem Hunt is just a free agent, uh, but these two guys are still looking for homes, and last season, they're just names. Like, they are just recognizable names at this point. Both players average under four yards a carry. Both of them appear to be towards the twilight of their career. Can they still find some yards and touchdowns in an offense? Sure. We just watched Latavius Murray have maybe one of his best seasons in the last five years at the age of 33. But if you watch either of these two players, it looked like they just struggled to get around the corner. And they were more or less not in favor with their own team. Sean Payton did add this when it comes to Javante Williams' rehab. I would tell you that we expect him to be ready for the start of training camp, and that's good news. His rehab is going well. I don't want to speak for him or Bo or anyone else, but we get the daily reports. And look, we're pretty tight-lipped relative to information going out, but I've got I've I've read a lot, and I think his rehab's going well. And this was before Javante Williams was limited during OTA. So a lot of good signs that Williams will be ready to go by the start of the season, which is incredible if you really think about it for what he has battled through so far to get back on the field already. So the only way I see Denver adding Kareem Hunt or Ezekiel Elliott or any other running back is if Kareem Hunt has a setback, right? KJ Hamler last year was ready to go for week one until he wasn't ready to go, right? And then he was on and off the active roster for the next couple of weeks as he kind of pushed his return and wasn't really 100% and couldn't run 100%. So while Williams is just limited right now, he might remain just limited to start the season where he's really not 100% all the way there. And that's really the only path I see where if Javante Williams tells the coaching staff, I'm ready to go, put me in, and he starts going, it's like, whoa, slow down, old Nelly. I'm not ready to go because it's happened before. J.K. Dobbins came back from a similar injury like Javante Williams for the Ravens last year, missed the first couple of weeks of the season. Then he came back and played, and then he got surgery on his knee again. So, like, these things do happen. Don't take Javante Williams being limited in OTAs as it's a proven fact he will be 100% ready to go week one as this team's starting running back. Some other free agents still on the market. Leonard Floyd at running back. Ben Jones, if he's willing to come up to Denver, I feel like he's closer to retiring than going to a team he doesn't know if they are really one center away from winning a Super Bowl. Dalton Reisner, if you want to kick Quinn Miners to center and move uh, Reisner to right guard, I don't hate that offensive line combination. Chris Hubbard could be a good swing tackle, although he did sign Cam Fleming, but you never know. Marcus Peters, if, I don't know, Damari Mathis or Riley Moss aren't looking to part, Again, they don't really need any of these guys necessarily, but Sean Payton did say they're maybe looking to sign one or two. Shelby Harris could be fun. Steven Weatherly, remember they traded him to Pittsburgh, so don't rule out a potential reunion if Denver liked Weatherly in the locker room. Carl Nassib, kind of a cheaper defensive end compared to the first three guys we talked about, so there are definitely some more affordable options out there. 
Now, who do you want to sign? Is it one of the 15 players we looked at today? Is it someone else? Sound off for me in the comment section below who you would like to see the Peyton duo sign in free agency. That's going to do it for us on today's show. I always appreciate people that take time out of their day to join us. And hey, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, real MVP shout out to you for not tapping out halfway through. So uh, type real one down in the comment section below. It's the rally cry here at Chat Sports, And I want to know who the real ones are that watch the video all the way to the end.